asking of me.
Did you ever look at one of your fellow soldiers, even if they were off duty in their regular clothes, did you call them civilians? No. Would you consider yourself a civilian? I don't know even now. How long have you been out of the military? 20 years? 30? It's been a long time. 50 years he's been out of the Marines and still no one in the military refers to him as a civilian. He's not a civilian. He's a soldier. Has not fallen 50 years? He's a soldier. That's the picture that Paul is giving us. He says no soldier can be entangled with the affairs of the civilian life. You forfeited that. You gave up that old life. You gave up those old ambitions. I'm not telling you that you can't be successful. I'm not telling you you can't start a business. I'm not telling you you can't work. But there is a far difference between pursuing a career and being entangled with the affairs of this life. Is there anybody hearing me today? You can't be on the battlefield and bullets whizzing by your head and you're supposed to be detonating C4 over here. You're supposed to be shooting bazookas and you're looking at your picture of your girlfriend back at home. That is an absolute sure way of getting yourself a bullet in the dome right there. You've got to put all of that on the side. And when it's time to fight, it's time to fight. Is there anybody that's going to come and say, Pastor, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. I've got too much in store. God has got too much in store for me to be walking around worrying about Billy and Donnie and Jimmy and Susan. You need to get your mind on Jesus. He'll backslide. He'll fall and sin. I don't even know how it happened. I know how it happened. Because you spend about 80% of your day on a cell phone and Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. I don't even know all the junk they got out now. Snapchat, you know I'm for technology. But you can't be a soldier in this army if all you read is the comics. At some point, you got to know how to fight. At some point, you got to read the manual that teaches you how to go to war. David said, God, teach my fingers to fight. I wonder if there's anybody in here that would be humble enough to say, you know what? I've just been coasting. I've been up, I've been down, I've been in, I've been out. But I'm tired of that now. I'm tired of the up and down, the in and out. I'm tired of getting beat down by the same old, same old, same old. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up in Christ and become a good soldier. Listen, for you visitors that need to go early, I'll let you tip out. I promise. I'm just glad you're here. This might be my last sermon. My dad died when he was 21. Heart attack, just like that, gone. And I've spent the last 38 years without my dad. I'm not playing with you. This could be my last sermon. Let me tell you what else. It could be your last sermon, too. And I promise you that one of my sermons is going to be my last. And one of my sermons, if you're here, is going to be the last one for you. We are so entangled in this life. You, you can't even get to your gun. Because you've got to take off your scarves and all the decorations and, and all your civilian clothes. You've got all your civilian clothes on top of you. On top of you. Uniform, and you're trying to. I'm a soldier underneath. No, you're not. You're a joker. And I say that as humbly and loving as I possibly can. We got to fight. We got to get serious. And some of you, now you listen to me, you listen to me carefully because you are not going to like this. You tangled yourself up. You know what you want me to do? Get yourself untangled. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We want God to just reach in and Everything. And that's why we're so mad at God all the time. God, why would you take it away from me? God has washed you in the blood of Jesus. He's put His Spirit in your heart. He's given you deliverance over and over again. And you chose to go back there. You chose to revisit that. You and 
untangled yourself. And now you're down here saying, oh God, you don't love me anymore because you are untangling yourself. I promise you that once God sees you make an effort, he'll strengthen you. He'll give you wisdom on where the, the knots are at, how to untie them. But you got to stop walking around waiting for God to do everything. There are some things that you're going to have to do for yourself. Why is any of this important? Why is any of this important? I'm not asking you for opinion. I want to know what Paul says to Timothy. Why is this preaching important? No man that we I can't I can't go there because I will make a few of you mad, and I don't mean to. I'm gonna hit the reset button. Alright. I defaulted that thought. You should be thanking Jesus right now. Thou therefore and dear hardness is a good soldier. Jesus Christ. No man. Make sure I read in the other Bible. No man that wars and tangles himself with the affairs of this life. Why? That he may please him. Who has chosen him. Be a good soldier. I want to please you. I'd like to please you. I can live without you. You can live without me. I don't want to live without you. There, are, I draw strength from you. I will be a better man today, a better father, a better husband because I was with you today. But if you decide you're not going to be in my life anymore, I'm going to let you go. I'm not going to avoid you when I see you at Walmart. I'll buy you a milkshake if you're at cookout with me. But you can go. I can't live without him. Thursday, Wednesday, I cut that umbilical cord for the fifth time. Mama gets the baby first. Should be. And they handed me that boy and I did him like I've done every one of my children. I raised him up to God in front of the nurses. And everybody Amen. in there, and I said, this yes. son yes. belongs to you. Amen. I want to tell you why that's significant to you. But all same reasoning. I ought to be drunk today. I ought to have been married numerous times. I ought to have children with numerous women all over this country because that is where I was headed. Wow. Yes, Lord. Thank God for my beautiful mother. But I didn't have a steady father figure outside my mother. It's not the same. I didn't have a father. I never saw a man treat a woman the way a woman was supposed to be treated. And when I raise up my fifth son, my, my fifth child, and I'm able to dedicate him to a holy God and take him to a house that's filled with the Holy Ghost. In a house that God rules and reigns and the dictates of our life is the Bible. And I should be in jail. I should be in a straitjacket. I ought to be in hell, but I'm not. I'm a man of God, married to the court, the godliest woman I've ever met. I cannot take credit for that. I can only say, God, thank you. I, I don't know why you did it, but I will serve you the rest of my life. I got four children. All of them claim to be saved. My boys are rambunctious. But they love God. My sons sing gospel music. They pray. I come and catch them praying for each other. I catch them fighting. I catch them praying for each other. I got two of the godliest daughters that I've ever met in my life. It wasn't my doing. God is done. He's been there. How can I walk away from him? And how can I give him anything less than my best? And I want you to survey your life. Has God been good to you? Should you have died and went to hell? Should you have been lost? Should you be divorced right now? Should you be in a, in a straight jacket right now? If you're not, you ought to throw your hands up and say, God, I don't know how you did it, but you did me a favor. I'm going to serve you with everything.
something else I get weary of hearing. I get weary of people talking to me like I don't have struggles. Like the zeal and the passion that I carry is something I was born with. Like it's something that's not challenged every single day of my life. I get tired of it. People trying to, they talking to me like I'm some big deity or something. Telling me all the struggles and, I, and acting like I, I can't relate to them. My walk with God is challenged every second of every day. But there's something, I've never been the smartest guy in the room. I've never been the greatest preacher. Never been the greatest singer or musician. I've never been the greatest in any area. I can't attribute the success that God has given me. And I'm not talking about church. I'm talking about a wife and children. And my life is steady. It's stable. God is in me. I'm walking with Him. It. It's never been anything that I did. One thing. I love Him. I love Him. I've never forgotten where He saved me from. I've never forgotten where I was headed. Stand me across the house, please, Sister Ashley, if you could, please come. That it may please Him this call on Him. I want to please him. How do we please God? Well, the first word I think and the most key word that I can leave you today is the word obedience. Yeah. Pastor Greg is close to a theologian as I know. At least in this room. There's a scripture teaches it's better to obey than sacrifice. Brother, I can't do the things today that I used to do when I was out in sin. I just can't. There's some things I've had to sacrifice. But none of that happened until I obeyed. Guys, I'm tired. As a pastor of this church, I'm, I'm tired. My life is very tired. I need some people in this room to come up with some things and stick it out. We probably have less volunteers and less committed workers right now than in the history of our church. I, I can't do it by myself. Four, five, eight people can't do it by ourselves. And I feel covered up. I got a reason for saying all this. It's not poor mouth. I got a reason. And I've talked to some of you. You felt the same way. I thought about other options. Not because I don't love you, not because I don't want to be, because I don't think I'm the man for the job most of the time. I don't feel like I can get the job. And I wouldn't say that if I didn't have about 12 or 14 of you that have told me the same thing that you felt. Whatever it is that you do, you have felt at times like walking away from it. But God has dealt with me in the last several months. I can't describe it. I quit working for, for Revival Tabernacle. I don't work for you anymore, Brother Tom. I didn't technically anyway, but in my mind, I worked for the people of this church, striving. And I based my worth on what I, what I deemed success in this church. If there was a lot of people in the service was great, I felt good about myself and my ministry. And this is so basic and so fundamental that I'm almost embarrassed to say this. But God had to remind me that I'm a Christian before I'm a father or a husband or a pastor. That's what he had to remind me of. I was so caught up in being a pastor 
that I had allowed my relationship with God to be broken. Not backslid. Just not, not, not the connection like I used to have. And the reason I say all of that is just simply so you can know I understand some of you have let other people and how they treat you and how they respond to you and how they, they uh, accept you or don't accept you to cause you to deem your own self-worth by those around you. I'm a Christian and I'm loved by God. If nobody in this room ever, ever listens to another word I'm going to say. And very soon, very soon, I'm leaving here. Going that way. Going due north. It could be any moment. Brother Ricky, I'm telling you, brother. Christ can come for his church today. And what I'd like to do at this point is just, I'd like to ask you, if he come right now, right now, could you honestly say, I'm a good soldier. I endure hardness. I'm obedient. I'm on fire. I'm passionate. I'm as zealous right now as I've ever been in my life. If not, you got an issue. You got a problem.